Today, I wanted to talk about 7 factorials that you probably didn't know, and let's just get into it. First, of course, we should talk about the usual factorial, and let's talk about 4 factorial. It's just 4, and you put an exclamation mark after that, and to do this is just 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Perfect. The question for you guys is that, have you guys seen, what if we put 2, <laughs> 2 exclamation mark, and it looks like this, 4, like this. So in this case, what do we do? Do we just do the first factorial by itself, and then do another factorial? No, not at all. This right here will give us 24 inside, and then you factorial that, and you have to just, you know, just do all that all over again. And for this right here, let me tell you, the answer is just equal to 8. Yes, 8 and 24, Kobe Bryant, rest in peace. Alright, let's talk about how we get 8 from here first. And ladies and gentlemen, this is the first one of the day, and this is called the double factorial. Yes, it's a real thing. And yeah, the name is pretty obvious because we have two of them. Double factorial, right? And for this, of course, I will have to tell you guys the notation. And let's just get started right here. Well, let's say if we have n double factorial, it really depends on what n is. If it's an even number or an odd number. If it's an even number, well, we start with the number n, and then we just multiply by the next even number. So in that case, it will be n minus 2. And then the next number, which is going to be n minus 4, and so on, so on, so on, until we reach 4 and 2 at the end. And again, this is the even case. And if n is odd, well, we still start with n, and we multiply by the next odd number, and that will just be n minus 2 as well, because the gap between two odd numbers is 2. And then you just keep going, and this time you will reach 3 and 1, and this is the odd case. Alright, so I will also give you guys examples right here. Earlier, we were talking about 4 double factorial, so in this case, we start with 4, and then we multiply by the next even number, which is 2. And of course, that's just equal to 8. I'm not going to multiply that out. And let's look at if we have 5 double factorial, this is going to be 5 times 3 times 1. And again, you can just work that out on your own. Alright, so this is the double factorial. And the application for this is that when you are doing calculus 2, sequence and series, sometimes this might be useful when you want to put the product of like all the even numbers or all the odd numbers into a more compact form. Alright, next question for you is that, have you guys seen what if we put 3 exclamation mark? Yes, that's called the triple factorial, and that's again a real thing. Yeah. I'm not gonna do it, because we can keep going. Like, we can put 4 exclamation mark and then so on, so on, so on. In general, they are called the multi-factorial. So, yeah. But anyway, let's talk about what if we put the exclamation mark in the front of the uh, N. So, again, that is indeed a real thing. Exclamation mark in front of the N. This right here is called the subfactorial. And the application for this is usually in discrete math when we are talking about the arrangement. Because the typical n factorial is talking about the number of ways that you can arrange n items in a row. If you have the sub factorial, then we're talking about the arrangement, meaning that you want to arrange and you see how many times, how many ways the items they don't go back to their original position. And I have another video on that already, so you guys can check that out. Well, how you can compute it is the following. You start with n factorial, and then, yeah, this is pretty crazy. You do 1 minus 1 over 1 factorial, plus 1 over 2 factorial, and then minus 1 over 3 factorial, and so on, so on, so on. They will alternate. And at the end, you actually, you have to look at negative 1 to the nth power. Of course, if n is even, then the last term will be adding. And then if n is odd, the last term will be subtracting and you multiply by 1 over n factorial. We have a lot of fractions, but I can guarantee you that this right here will turn out to be a positive whole number. If you end up with like a fraction, then that means you did something wrong. But anyway, let me just show you an example real quick. Suppose we want to calculate subfactorial of 4. Well, we can use this formula here, which is just going to be 4 factorial times 1 minus 1 over 1 factorial plus 1 over 2 factorial minus 1 over 3 factorial and then plus 1 over 4 factorial. 
and the answer is going to be 9. All right, so I'll just leave that to you guys. Okay, so that's pretty good. Mm, what's next? Do we put two exclamation marks in front of the end? No, don't be too crazy. What we are going to do next is that we'll put the exclamation mark up of the end. No, I just make this up. I'm sorry. We ran out of symbols, no more exclamation marks. But rather, we'll be using the hashtag symbol, but we don't put the hashtag in front of the end. Rather, we put the hashtag after the end. This right here is number three. It's called the prime Mario. And if you look at just these words, you can see that that's almost like prime, right? Without the E. Yes, this right here has to do with prime. And again, the notation is N, and you could put a hashtag sign after that, all right? And the notation, that's a notation. And the definition is that, well, we're just going to look for and multiply. And let's use the big pi notation for multiplication. We look for all the primes less than or equal to n, and then we're just going to multiply them all together. That's it. So real quick, let's say if we have 4 with the hashtag after that, 4 is not prime, so you don't multiply 4 with it. 3 and 2 are, so you just multiply 3 and 2. And let's look at, let's say, 7 hashtag. This right here, because 7 is prime, so you go ahead and just put on 7, and you multiply by the next prime, which is 5, and then 3, and then 2. And then you can just work that out. Yep, so that's pretty much it. And um, here's actually a fun question for you guys. I'm not sure about this because, yeah, question for you guys. If this is a definition, how would you define one hashtag? Yeah, is it going to be zero? Is it just going to be one? Because we usually have all the factorials being equal to one. I don't know. Yeah. Let me know what you think, all right? And we'll just continue. Again, we kind of, <laughs> we're not going to put two hashtags after the end anymore. Let's look at the next one. This one has a really, really cool name. It's called the super factorial, right? And then for the super factorial, well, there are actually two kinds of definitions depending on which book that you're reading or which author that you're following. This is the one from Sloan. His definition is the following. And first, that's a note. Let's talk about the notation. It's just SF, not San Francisco, right? SF of N. This right here, that's once again use the big pi notation. This time, let's say we have some number k as the index. We are going to go from 1 to N. And what we are going to do is, we are going to just multiply all the factorials along the way. Yeah. So here, it's going to look like k and you factorial that. So what do I mean? Let's look at super factorial of 4. And as we all know, the regular factorial of 4 is just going to be starting at 4, and then we multiply by 3, and then we multiply by 2, and then we multiply by 1. But this is the super factorial, so please go to these numbers and then factorial each number, like so. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, super factorial of 4 is equal to 4 factorial times 3 factorial times 2 factorial times 1 factorial. Crazy enough, huh? If you think this is crazy, okay, check out the next one. Number five, also super factorial. But this is just another definition, all right? And let me just write this down. This is by pickover. And let me just emphasize that I'm not saying I'm going to pick this definition over the other definition. I'm simply saying this is the name of the person who came up with this definition for this super factorial, right? Okay, notation is and with a dollar sign. How cool is that? It's got a dollar sign. Check this out. So what we do is, in this case, you start with n factorial for the base. And notice that earlier we have been talking about multiplications a lot. Here, it's a next, next level. We do the titration. You do n factorial titration here. So what do I mean by this? Let me give you this example real quick. Let's say we're looking at 4 and then a dollar sign for the super factorial. This means we will do 4 factorial for the base, and then we do 4 factorial for the titration. And because 4 factorial is just 24, so we will have 24 for the base, and you put a little 24 here. So what do we do? Well, we start with 24, and then you raise to a 24th power, and then you raise to a 24th power, and you raise to a 24th power, and you keep going, and then the last number right here is also 24. 
Yeah, twenty four to twenty four, and then so on, so on, so on. How many times? Yes, a total of twenty four of these twenty fours. So this power tower has the height of twenty four, and because I don't have a calculator, so can you guys please help me use your calculator and then just enter this on your calculator and let me know how big this number is. I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. All right, so I'll leave that to you guys. Okay, so that is the other super factorial. It has the exponentiation version, right? And number six has a similar flavor, and the name is exponential factorial. And this is how we do it. First, I will have to mention that unfortunately the notation here is the same as this one, so you just have to pay attention to which definition that they are using. So in this case, though, if you are looking at n with a dollar sign, well, this definition for the exponential factorial is that we start with n, and then we raise to the n minus one power, and then raise to the n minus two power, and so on, so on, so on. So no more multiplication, but rather it's just exponentiation, and of course we end up with. One at the end, right? So this right here, a super quick example is four. With this dollar sign, this means we do four to the third power to the second power to the first power, like that. Four, three, two, one. Very cute, huh? All right, ladies and gentlemen, last one. Can you guys give me a name better than super? Did I hear hyper? Good. Number seven, hyper factorial. Oh my god! It's, I think this is the best name ever. Hyper factorial. Oh, by the way, though, this kind of thing is also called the hyper power. If you guys didn't know that. All right, hyper factorial. This is the definition. Right, the notation is h of n, like so. And again, for factorial, what we do is you just start with n and you just keep going down, right? So n, and then the next one is n minus one, and then n minus two, and so on, so on, so on, until we reach uh, two and one, right? But of course, this right here is the hyper version. What we do is, please do n raised to the nth power, yeah, and then this right here, n minus one raised to the n minus one power, and then two raised to the two power, and then one to the one power. So here is a example. Let's look at h of four. Well, this right here is just that we are going to start with four, but raised to the fourth power times three. Time uh, to the third power, and then two to the second power times one to the first power. So, yeah, kind of similar flavor, but of course the super version, also the hyper version of the regular factorial. So as always, that's it.